the recording. So we do like to record these meetings. And then we can start with our introductions um, for our December 10th meeting of the Diversity and Inclusion Workgroup meeting. Um, I assume we, uh, Don, did you put this on here? Because we have I, a new member? I did, because there's, there's somebody who knew who doesn't always attend these calls. So I thought introductions would be nice. Okay, I'll start. Hi, I'm Georg Blink. I'm at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. I'm currently working on my PhD and helping out with uh, developing our DNI metrics here. And I'm Don Foster. I do open source strategy at Pivotal Software in London, and I've been um, reasonably active in the DNI working group at least for the past past six months or so. Um, this is Daniel. I'm one of the founders of Peteria. I'm, I'm mostly working with data and doing some data analytics about open source and open source projects. Um, well, I'm learning a lot from the DI working group. And Sarah. Great. Hi, I'm Sarah Conway. I'm the VP of Communications at the Linux Foundation, and I've worked on marketing and PR for a lot of the projects from Linux to Node to uh, Kubernetes within CNCF and the other projects there and Hyperledger. And um, through a lot of the, those programs, there's been um, increasing focus and activity around diversity and inclusion, um, whether it's mentoring and supporting, you know, Kubernetes or Node in those fronts or um, code of conducts or how DNI plays out in at events and just trying to get um, more involved in this group to try to see what best practices and work that you're doing might be shared across more LF projects and to hopefully even get more LF projects engaged in this too. So wanting to, uh, you know, learn more about it. So thanks for having me. Great. Welcome. Welcome. Good to have you. Thank you. So update on last week's action items is the next item on our agenda. So I'm scrolling down. Um, action item done. You wanted to create a pull request to add Matt's and Nicole's GitHub account. I saw that as complete. Yeah. Matt wanted to reach out to the LF for the mailing list and I'm I think he did, no, I know for a fact he did so. Mm -hmm. I still need to, that's an action item for me, to um, send the old emails so that we can backfill the archive again. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Nicole who is not here to work on the contributing and the readme. I didn't see any progress there. Not yet, I haven't seen any. No. Then action item maintainers on the monthly review and contributors. Um, that's not due necessarily right now. And Nicole draft proposal for the Open Source Leadership Summit, still waiting on that. And then uh, Daniel, you had looked at issues 120 and 121. I forgot which ones those were. Yeah, but uh, I'm afraid I have not any advance. I didn't have the time this week, I'm sorry. Same with me. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'm pulling them up to see what that was, 120, 121. Just the number uh, itself is not helpful. <laughs> Just a, a point about the, uh, the notes from last week. We do need to be a bit more diligent about not putting things as agreed just because we, we agreed to them in the meeting. So there are several things that are marked in bold as agreed but the decision making for the project is not to make decisions in the meeting. So we just need to be more diligent in the notes that, that 
that those are recommendations so that people can object and we can agree on something different for people who aren't in the meeting. Thank you, Don. That is a good point. That, that's just going to be a struggle because it's human nature. If the four of us agree on something, we're going to be like, oh, we agree. That's great. And that's going to be, that's going to be a hard habit to break. Mm, does it make sense if we try some kind of lazy consensus on the, as in the ESF? So we simply send when we want to have some agreement. We, send an email. We, we do have lazy consensus, but the point is we can't, we don't get lazy consensus in the meeting. Yeah. So we can't, in the notes, we can't say agreed this. We can say recommended this. And then if, if nobody objects to it, it's basically sort of de facto agreed to. Okay. But we just need to be clear that the decisions are not happening in the meetings, that the decisions are okay. on the meetings. Oh, do you still, you are still listening to some background noise? Just did okay now. A bit, the background noise. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, I just pulled up the uh, 120 and 121, and they were resource pages, leadership and mentorship. Um, is 120 and then 121 is the onboarding. Okay, yeah, I have not uh, built out my contribution type either, but I did uh, create a pull request which is the next item on our list. Um, so how do, what do we do about the action items that we haven't addressed? Should we put them, just move them up again so that we have them again? Action items from last week ongoing? Yeah, yeah. I would say action items from previous meetings and just create a little section for those. Okay. Because some of them, like Nicole took the action item for that proposal for that conference, but the CFP is open through the end of January. So I'm guessing we won't, she probably won't bother to do anything on that. Um, the other thing, it's not, it's not on the agenda, but I'm gonna bring it up now because it's super quick. Um, one of us should probably take the action item to send a message to the mailing list and discuss which meetings to cancel over the holidays. Because chances are we're probably not going to have one on Christmas Eve, I'm guessing, nor on New Year's Eve. Um, but we should probably, rather than making that decision here, we should make that on the mailing list. Um, I'm happy to take that action item, actually. But I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, Garrick, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, thank you. I, I just pulled up the action items. I was thinking it would be good for the facilitator of a meeting to um, already put them up top, mm -hmm. aggregate them, so that we don't have to spend time during the meeting doing that. Just speeds it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other, any other points on action items? And we can move on to pull requests. I created uh, two pull requests that are still open. One is just to fix a link from the readme to where we have the 
uh, dimensions of demographics. That's 139. Okay. I'll just go ahead and approve that one and merge it if nobody objects, since it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. The one that needs a bit more discussion, I assume, is uh, 140. And I posted a link in the minutes. It's a pull request to add new dimensions of demographics. And this came out of the interviews that I was doing. And I even posted the quote specifically addressing these dimensions. One is, what is the motivation for someone contributing? Are they paid or unpaid? And the other is, what is their organizational affiliation? Specifically, the last one is um, something we have been somewhat ignoring, the organizational diversity, but it comes up in a lot of conversations and at ChaosCon and when we look at the metrics repository, it's one third of all metrics that are currently there for diversity and inclusion are concerned with organizational diversity. And I think by adding organizational affiliation as a dimension of demographic, we solve that problem by integrating it into our way of representing metrics. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, I don't really have an answer. At the very beginning when we started the working group, as you said, basically, uh, organizational diversity was out of the discussion because we were mostly focused on, well, first gender diversity at the very beginning, but then we started to, to have a broader concept of diversity, of course. Mm, I don't know if this is, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a strong opinion. Maybe Don or Sal. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know that I have a strong opinion. Init my initial reaction to it was that um, organizational affiliation doesn't necessarily impact um, diversity and inclusion, but, but the more I think about it, the more I think that if all of the contributors are from a specific company, that that's um, not particularly inclusive. Maybe they're excluding other people based on, I don't know, other, other diverse characteristics. Um, so I don't know it, what, and I, yeah. I, I can give you a specific example where I have experienced this. And this is back in the days with the openoffice.org community where mm -hmm. all the main developers were located in Hamburg at the Sun location or Sun company. Mm -hmm. And they would have hallway chatter, they would have meetings about open office and the community was often left out of decisions where they mm -hmm. didn't know why things happened or were delayed or anything. So I think having diversity even within organizations is very much a diversity inclusion issue. Is that um, my other concern is that 13 and 14 look like um, there's some some overlap between the two because is it really is it really an issue with paid contributors versus unpaid contributors or is it organizational affiliation itself? I just don't know. I'm just you know I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. Yep. Yeah. So the organizational affiliation is. Um, Something that uh, many people I've talked to care a lot about, and that is how well are different companies represented in a project. And it's not so much um, that they care about the individual people, it's really which companies have control over it. Mm -hmm. The other point about paid versus volunteer contributors is what is the motivation for these people to be in the community? 
-hmm. is this a community that values um, people just coming in, giving their best free time? Or is this something where you only find people who are paid to be here? And that can shape the nature of the project as well. Mm -hmm. I do find from a marketing perspective, if a project is really heavily dominated by one vendor that can sometimes influence um, the marketing too, or the, you know, how the branding of a project or how you're trying to grow um, the project and not always in the healthiest of ways. I think that the, and having many different companies creates sort of a balance of vendor viewpoints so that you don't have one that dominates. Um, so I think it, ends up having an impact in terms of a healthier project is one that has different companies and, and different um, commercial viewpoints that might may or may not be part of the mix. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I would agree that it makes a huge difference when it comes to the health of the community. Yeah. Um, the bit that I'm struggling with is, does this belong in the diversity and inclusion working group or does this belong in, in GMD? I guess is a bit of what I'm, what I'm struggling with a bit because it, Paid contributor versus unpaid contributor and organizational affiliation are very different from the 12 that come above it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the bit that I'm struggling with, Garrick. It's not that I don't think that they're, I think that they're super important. And Got what it. I'm trying to decide is whether they belong in this one or somewhere else within the project. And I just don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just raising questions because they do look very different than the 12 above them. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just thinking that we don't have to decide it today. Mm -hmm. This I just put this out there as a point of discussion, and we can bring it up again tomorrow during our hangouts with both board groups and see what they think. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. So um, after listening to you, uh, perhaps maybe point of view right now would be, well, when an experience having this kind of information in the dashboards. So if we have companies affiliation, this is quite easy then to gamify, we are the best here and blah, 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 which is something different from the point of view of the things we want to try to achieve in this working group. So uh, perhaps what we need to have here is, um, I would say having a uh, a diverse set of companies helps to have again different point of view, even if they are geographically distributed. So we can have companies from Australia, and Asia, and, and, and Europe, and, and the US, for instance, and South America. So then we are we are bringing a lot of people with a lot of different point of view, uh, all to fix problems and so on, which is a good way to be more inclusive. So you are having people from several parts of the world which is at the same time really heavily related to the time zone and so on. So from this specific perspective and rational, it may make sense to say, hey, having a diversity of organizations makes sense because at the same point, we are bringing people from several areas of the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we need to say uh, the, other, the other point of view, which would be, but if we have, uh, a diverse set of organizations, uh, then we should avoid these behaviors that we've seen before as well. We uh, have been uh, perhaps trying, even perhaps, um, and so I, I kind of disagree with you, so trying to, to, to ignore that commercial point of view in some cases. So I agree about the marketing and, and the importance of having different point of view for the marketing actions. Right. But from an inclusion and diversity perspective, perhaps, I don't know if this is that important. So uh, this is that kind of the, so what, what I want to say in summarizing is that if we are adding this specific layer, then we need to have a really heavy rational and well thought about this. That's mm -hmm. all. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'd sort of like the idea of tabling this uh, for now in this meeting and then talking about it in the, the broader broader mm -hmm. meeting. I think we should also think about whether or not we should rephrase it a little bit like, um, yeah, I don't know, like welcoming to volunteers or 
I don't know. This is a list of dimensions, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, never mind. Let's just table it and talk about it and bring it up in the meeting tomorrow. Yeah, I think welcoming to volunteers is something that we kind of try to capture. But to be able to measure that, we have to know whether someone is participating as a volunteer mm -hmm. or not. And so that is a dimension of demographics. Yeah. OK. Um, I also think that given, um, given that this meeting is slightly lightly attended um, and that Emma and Nicole aren't here. Um, Georg, it might be good to uh, send an email to the diversity and inclusion mailing list with this poll request and let them know that we're going to talk about it tomorrow. I'm just okay. thinking we might be able to get some more perspectives on the mailing list before we, before we take it into the other meeting. Thank you. I added an uh, action item for me. Okay. Do that. The next item on our agenda is metrics versioning. And this came out of the, who was all at the, Don, you were there. Daniel, were you there at the call last week? Uh, sorry, which, which call? The monthly chaos call where we got the request to talk about metrics versioning. Um, yeah, I was there. I don't, yeah, I don't remember if Daniel, if you were there. So the, I was there. Okay. So Sarah, for your benefit, the conversation that we are having is how to release metrics and how to um, version them because especially implementations in software, it might be um, lagging behind the metric definition. So we want to have a way for saying, we implement these metrics as of this version. And then if chaos comes out with a new version, mm -hmm. the software might still be running on older definitions. And the definition of a metric might change the way it's calculated. So it mm -hmm. could potentially become important to know which version is implemented and used. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So for for some time, we had said, okay, we'll just not attach an arbitrary version number, but if software wants to implement it, then it can just say, we are implementing this metric with as of this date, and then link to the git commit mm -hmm. that um, has the specific definition. This would would just allow a continuous metric definition work where if you implement it, you just say this is the version that I'm using. But in terms of releasing it, it becomes and communicating that we released metrics and what version or the maturity of a metric it becomes difficult. And right now, the sense I am getting is that um, there are people in the community who would favor that we just say this is a version one metric and release a portfolio of metrics under version one. So we as diversity and inclusion work group would say, here are all the metrics that we have ready for release, or let's say it's a beta release. So please give us feedback and try implementing them. And then after three months or six months or whatever, 
we release the next version. So th that's the conversation that mm -hmm. how I see it right now. Um, maybe someone else would like to join in or have some thoughts on this. Yeah, the other the other bit that's important is what we talked about was putting the metrics on the website. So you wouldn't necessarily have a git commit to link to, which is why the versioning becomes important. Yeah. I can't remember if Georg said that or not. No, that's a good addition, but we can just as simply put the git commit version on the website. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I suppose you remember we were discussing about what either having a whole release with everything or having specific uh, versions for each of the metrics we have. So, and there were there were some different opinions last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I don't know. Do you have a specific opinion about this or way of working? My so my opinion on this from a diversity and metrics. Um, diversity and inclusion metrics standpoint is that our metrics are probably probably less complicated from a versioning perspective maybe than some of the other other metrics I mean I, I would be curious if the GMD working group has any specific requirements like I can't I can't see that either way would be particularly more or less difficult for us I don't I don't know that it would makes that much of a difference to this group so I'd be curious to see if it makes a big difference in how the GMD working group works. I mean, do you think, does anybody think this would have a big impact on, on this group, depending on how we decided to do it? Mm, I see basically more bureaucracy if we go at the level of the metric uh, and defining a version for each of them, because then we have to maintain all of the metrics. Mm -hmm. so this is kind of my opinion. I'm basically against, against this, so I prefer to go for perhaps there's a set of metrics that we can define as mature enough. So we say, hey, these are those. And then we have some incubating metrics or so it's some work. And then we have some two levels. Mm -hmm. But everything is all together in the same package, right? Okay, this is what we have. So you would package them together and do a release of the metrics. Mm -hmm. Because then, um, let's say that we, let's imagine that we have all of these implemented in in some specific uh, software release for Augur, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's all right, but then Augur will be pointing to a specific release in time. Mm -hmm. mm. The only thing here is that we are mainly working with the wiki. Um, I don't know if we have releases in the wiki. Do we have? I mean, the wiki uh, has a timestamp for a version. Oh, perfect. So at least we can say, uh, and do you know, Georg, if we can basically check out uh, the specific wiki stage, a specific date, on a specific date? Okay, then this could be solved. The, um, the so thoughts I have is it doesn't matter at all how it's versioned. Um, I don't even care whether it's versioned or whether we use a git commit timestamp, whatever. The benefit of having a version, a chaos-wide version, coordinated version release, is that we have a forcing function to review our metrics and clean them up. <laughs> but that's the only benefit that I see. Otherwise, implementation-wise, the metrics we have so far, they're, they will vary widely in how they're implemented right now. So there's a lot, I think we are an early alpha version of anything because we have to see how people will actually start using them. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly in our goals, which we will go to next actually, the, we do have an item. I'm going to open this up to uh, take a look at this. We do have an item for having criteria for metrics um, where we can say this is an alpha, beta, finished, usable, tested, whatever. 
Yeah, I'm gonna post the link in the chat. That's the document I'm talking about. Objective four is what I'm thinking of, where we say the diversity inclusion working group has a checklist of quality that clearly identifies the state of a metric, work in progress, beta published, and what that means. I think that relates very much to the versioning discussion. Mm -hmm. So should we add a Sorry, should we add a key result around versioning? Yes. Okay, I can just do that. Um. Okay, so concluding this metrics version discussion, I'm getting a sense that the diversity and inclusion work group doesn't have many requirements right now. And we would maybe defer to the GMD work group. That's that's my opinion. I mean, it sounds like Daniel has a preference for kind of packaging them up and doing them as, as a release and doing the versioning that way, but it doesn't sound like there's any strong opinions from anybody else. Yeah, I suggest that it's a bit more simple. Mm -hmm. Happy to proceed in, in the way we all agree. So that's okay. No, I mean, I, I agree with you. I do think that that would be definitely a simpler mm -hmm. um, approach. If the GMD group had some specific reason to want to version each metric separately, then then we can have that conversation. But, but I do like the idea of kind of packaging it all up together so it's like one set of chaos metrics every quarter or something, like do periodic releases. I I do sort of like that idea. Yeah, that sounds simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it allows the project to show momentum too, mm -hmm. if you think of it from a kind of a marketing perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the point about this is that as most of our work in the wikis are basically based on the metrics, basically sending them pull requests and so on, we can simply list the, the list of commits we have and say, hey, you summarize this and then you have all of the areas we've been working during the last quarter. So if you want to see the advances from this to the other, then we can have uh, that document. But... Okay, so I summarized this as a proposal that we defer to GMD for versioning procedure. Our preference is for periodic batch releases with a change lock of changes since last release. Um, yeah, and the only thing I would add to that is like it's not just a batch release of our metrics, but all of the chaos metrics. Oh, okay. Is that how they currently release their metrics or how have they made a determination on how they're doing the versioning and everything and the frequency? No, the GMD working group hasn't decided either. We started this discussion in the main chaos meeting, but they wanted us to have a more detailed discussion in each of the working groups and then come back. Got it. Um, but keep in mind that we haven't had a release of the metrics yet. So we yep. have, you know, we're working on individual bits and pieces, but um, so we can still, we can still kind of decide how we want to release them since we haven't okay. done a release yet. Sir, I don't know how familiar you are with the history and the setup of chaos. I'm happy to fill you in real quick. Yeah, you, I don't want to take, you know, on Rowan's time. We could either, we can do it here or just, you know, have a side conversation. But I, I remember learning about it when it first launched, but I haven't kept up with the progress and, you know, quarter over yeah. quarter or year over year. Yeah, no worries. So yeah, we launched last year in September at the Open Source Summit right. in North America. And 
we started out with two committees, one software committee, one metrics committee. And the work that we are doing, first we collected um, groupings of metrics in the metrics committee. And mm -hmm. these groupings have now evolved into their own work groups around these groupings. And we have two of them. One is the growth, maturity, and decline work group. Mm -hmm. And the other are we, we with the diversity and inclusion work group. And mm -hmm. each work group is advancing the metrics in this category. Right. And so that's where we are today. Okay. That's how it came about. Got it. Okay, then I rest the proposed versioning of DNI metrics. We have a proposal to post to the list. And then we move on to the goals. And Emma has point on this. So I was hoping she was here. The point is, or why we are doing this is to figure out what it is we want to accomplish next year. And we have several really good ideas here in this document. But it looks like we need some cleaning up. <laughs> um, is there anything we want to talk about today? Or should we wait until we have Emma on the call? I almost think we probably need to wait until we have Emma on the call because I feel like all of us have added comments to it. I saw Sarah, you had some comments in there as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we're kind of waiting to get her feedback on all of the all of the changes. Yep. Oh, just a comment here, Sarah. I don't know if you had the opportunity to have a look at the goals for the working group, but if you have any specific goal in terms of diversity and inclusion that you would like to see there included in the in the document. So basically, ideas and comments are very welcome. So uh, perhaps uh, I'm not really familiar with the document, but perhaps Garrett or Tom, if you are, perhaps we can go through the three, four main goals that we have for 2019 and basically have some brief discussion. Does it make sense? Or do you prefer to simply wait for for Emma? So I, I have to go. I have to go to my comment first. Okay. That Sarah is aware of the goals that we have, and second, to go through the goals that we have. I did so, see these goals um, when I I reviewed this document maybe a week or two ago, and um, you know I I had, but I you know I'm sort of familiarizing myself with them, you know, to get a little bit more ingrained in that you know understand them and wrap my head around them more. But I did see them, but. Um, I'd love to hear your perspective too, how you sort of came to these four, if there's any history there. So then that's the second part. Thank you, Sharon. So I'm not familiar with this document, so perhaps Don or Georg, you are more familiar with this, or we just simply wait for Emma and Nicole. So, so the reason we're waiting for Emma, so I'll give you a little background on this document. So Emma is going to have much less time to spend on diversity and inclusion working mm -hmm. group for next year. So um, what she, the big thing she wanted to do before she left was to help us um, kind of do a brain dump for what she had been thinking for the goals because she's been one of the big drivers of this um, of this working group and so what she wanted to do is make sure that the the goals that she had sort of been envisioning all along were that we articulated those and that we agreed on them that we made sure we had a um, coherent set of goals for the whole the whole working group um, because we hadn't really had that we'd all been kind of kind of doing the things that seemed seemed right to us, but we hadn't really had a set of goals. So Emma is really the one who drafted these and, and came up with came up with all of this. And then we've been providing providing feedback to her to get them into a state where we can all sort of agree that these are these are indeed what we want to accomplish as a working group. Great. Okay. So they came from Emma's brain is the short answer to yeah. your question. <laughs> yeah. And also sorry Sarah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. The other part to it is um, where we are right now in the 
process of establishing chaos. We started last year. We have worked the first year really to set up the processes around how we want to work and getting up an initial set of metrics. And moving forward, a major goal is to uh, drive adoption and see these metrics used in practice. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see that reflected in the objectives that we have. Yeah. Welcome, Emma. We were talking about you. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Oh, Emma. <laughs> Good timing. Oh, she's in an airport, so she can only listen. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So, so Emma, we were just talking about the um, the goals document, and we've people have provided a lot of feedback, but we wanted to sort of. Um, cycle back with you on the feedback to try to decide, um, you know, get that in a more final, final state. Um, but it sounds like, like you said, you're in an airport and we only have about 15 more minutes. Um, will you be, will you be here next week? We could maybe devote pretty much the whole meeting and start with the goals and maybe do a deep dive into those. I'm not sure how well Emma can hear us. Um, I wish Zoom would tell us whether <laughs> anyone is typing. I know. Um, okay. Well, let's. Uh, I say we keep going, but maybe we maybe we do that for for the agenda for next week. Start with the start with the goals and hope that. Hopefully like, um, I can be here. It's this uh, objective one talks about the six focus areas. Are they documented in this plan here? Or is that in a different, are the focus areas oh. identified or what? Uh, yeah, those are on, those are on GitHub. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a link for you. I post a link for you, Sarah. Garrick's a master of. of Got it. Okay. Link. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. And here we have yeah. seven, but yeah, okay. Oh, are we bad at counting? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, do we want to set the goal of having all of them refined, <laughs> or do we allow ourselves to have six and then... <laughs> oh, I see. Gotcha. Um, okay. Okay, I don't see any comment from Emma, so yeah, we'll move on and hope she can. Sorry, I mean, I don't have to be on this call, so I'm just moving over somewhere else. Um, six focus areas is the question. The um, question is whether you can join next week's call and we can dedicate the yeah. entire meeting next week to goals. Yeah. Yeah, next week is much better. Sorry, I'm just coming back from the all hands. It's a bit of a mad two Mondays. No, no worries at all. So we'll uh, we'll just we'll table the goals discussion for now and just talk sure. about it. Yeah, next and week. I'll go through it before then too. I haven't had a, a chance to deep dive, so thank you. Sorry about this. No, no worries. If it makes you feel any better, a lot of us haven't completed our other action items either. So, <laughs> so you're in good company. Less guilty, maybe not that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think there's a point in going through the issues. Nothing happened on the issues since last week. And we still have our action items of working on specific issues. So if we just do that, that would be great. So I encourage all of us to work on the issue that we all picked. <laughs> the 
Next item I put on the agenda is a is whether we integrated the metrics repository items that were there originally into our metrics. And this has been um, something of concern lately because the metrics repository is going away. So we need to make sure any ideas that were there originally are covered in what we do, or we have a reason for dropping it. And I posted the link in the agenda, what the original metrics were. I think the individual diversity is uh, a teaser to what we have done. We have gone way more in detail on contributor demographics, leadership demographics, and new contributors versus maintainers. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if we have new contributors versus maintainers as a metric anywhere. Um, so that's a question I would we would have to look into. An organizational diversity, we talked about it a little bit earlier with regards to the pull request of adding it as a dimension and covering it that way. Or we can think about adding a focus area or offloading it to GMD. And I think we decided to table that conversation until tomorrow. And then with regards to inclusion, the last group, we have um, code contributions from different contributors. We have path to maintainership, maintainer promotion, change in maintainer numbers, all those. I'm confident that we already covered. So the only question is really this, what do we do about the organizational diversity before we get rid of this page? Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, looking at this, at this, uh, looking at this page, I feel like, like you said, I feel like we've gone like a lot. We've gone way beyond this. I also think that part of, I wasn't, I wasn't here at the very beginning of the diversity and inclusion working group, but I think part of it was set up because a lot of these. I, I don't know, a, a lot of the things on this page, I think, aren't that important when it comes to um, diversity and inclusion, compared to a lot of the things that we're working on now. Um, because this, you know, like the contributor demographics is, uh, you know, this is really kind of one bullet. And I feel like this is really the core of the the, the diversity and inclusion work. Um, and then they've, they've broken out a lot of things that are maybe important for product health, but I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is I don't like this page at all. Uh, <laughs> I like what we have now a lot better. And so I just don't even know what to do with it. Well, it will go away. The question is, <laughs> whether there is a thought or a metric on here that we want to preserve. Yeah. Um, I'm a little behind here, so apologize if my comment makes no sense, but you know, we get into volunteer contributor. So these are demographics you want to add. Like, so like we have demographics like gender region, um, you know, all those sorts of things we're saying that whether or not someone is a paid contributor, volunteer contributor, organizational affiliation is a diversity demographic, question mark? Uh, that, that is certainly a question. We had that question right. earlier, and I think we're going to okay. post, post that to the diversity and inclusion mailing list because yeah. we're not sure whether that's really a diversity and inclusion yeah, and I think we have to, like, I've seen other sort of, like, I don't know, there's like a, a word we need to come up with, like, like what, um, like, scope creep for diversity, like, you know, like, things like a welcoming readme is technically, I wouldn't say that, and that helps diversity, but we, I think we just have to be careful about creep of the <laughs> diversity creep. I, that's not the right word, but you know what I mean? I think that, that this is that. Mm -hmm. so I think that's good to send to the list.
Yeah, I would say maybe maybe we all take the action to look through this um, this page on GitHub and see if there's anything that we want to incorporate. Does that seem reasonable? I like that. Yeah, because I feel like I need to look at it in a lot more detail. Like it, as it is right now, I don't. I just don't like it. Yeah. So I'm having a that visceral response to it. I need to sit down and just kind of dig through it and see see what what's there that we should incorporate. And this is the focus areas link that was shared, right? Uh, no, this is the metrics. Oh, I I don't know. Maybe we're not even all looking at the same page. I was looking at the, uh, got it. Now I can't even find out. I've got so many tabs open. I posted in the chat again, the page that I was thinking about. Okay. That, that's the that's, metrics page. Got it. Okay. That's the page I was looking at. Okay. And this page existed before we started the work group. Mm -hmm. It came out of conversations we had in LA back in September last year. Mm -hmm. And then we started the work group uh, around February of this year. And we have developed our own set of metrics. Oh, and I so see what you're saying now. I see yeah. what you're saying now. Sorry, I, w I had a feeling that I was off. Although I see, yeah. I will, and I will, I, I will send my comment, read the other stuff another way. OK. Um, yeah, I can look through this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to create an issue or someone create an issue and assign it to us so we don't lose it in? Or is there already one? <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be helpful. So we're going to be mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I'll create an issue. OK. Thank you. OK. Um, the last thing we on our agenda is to figure out who is going to facilitate and take notes next time. I'm happy to facilitate next time unless somebody else wants to. You got it, Don. Thank you. And I'm happy to take notes again. Okay, so any other topics? We still have three minutes on the clock. So any other topics? Sarah, maybe you have some questions for us? No, I, I'll, I'll look through this, um, the metrics, you know, that you brainstormed and then some of the newer developments, you know, in this plan that you've captured and how your, your thinking has evolved. And I just sort of want to get my head around both of those um, pieces and see where how it's grown. And then... Um, I think this is, I'm just sort of uh, excited to start digging in and learning more about the work you're doing and get involved. Thanks. We're happy to have you. I think it's fantastic to finally have somebody from the Linux Foundation more involved. I, Welcome, I'm Sarah. Really I know. Thanks. Uh, Sarah, another comment. So we are having the chaos come, in case you are not aware of this, at the 1st of February, well, Friday before post them. Okay. Uh, so if it happens that you're around, you're more than welcome to join Okay, great, thank you. I, I posted the link for you in the uh, chat to the Chaos Con, our conference that uh, Daniel was talking about. Yes, thank you. I'll check that out. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you everyone right. for Thanks. joining us today. And I hope you have a good week. Remember to work on your action items and I'll see you next or tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.